Well, here we are getting closer and closer. Well, not exactly closer and closer. We're still a good chunk of the way to go, you know, before all the other championships and stuff, you know, are going down and everything like that. Let's start with the PLL first, um, lacrosse faithful. Um, I know y'all are not paying as much attention to me as some other people, but it's fine. It's fine. You look at week four, and we'll talk about my observations in a moment, but you look at the scores in the PLL, Water Dogs 10, Chrome 7, Cannons 19, Atlas 12, Redwoods 13, Chaos 8, the game was on ESPN2, Whips 12, Archers 15, and then the games that were this weekend in Connecticut, Water Dogs 16, Whips 13, Archers 10, Redwoods 3, and by the way, that's the lowest scoring PLL game ever, I think. You know, Chrome 6, Cannons 12, that game was also on ESPN2, and an Atlas 11, Chaos 15. And you look at the standings, you look at the standings, oh my goodness. We have we have some really good teams, and we have some, some rough, some rough, rough teams. Makes you wonder why seven teams get to go to the PLL playoffs, but it's it's looking like it's one of those years where, you know, the whole 17 playoff thing is a bad idea. It is a absolutely terrible idea. You know, get bring back the bring back the playoff for the draft pick for the number one draft pick. Bring that back, please. I need that back instead of, you know, quarterfinals and stuff like that. But the archers are on top with a plus 13 score differential. Water Dogs second, plus seven. Cannons three and two with a plus ten. Chaos three and two plus four. Cannons really improved from last year, passing the ball with so much efficiency and everything like that. Redwoods three and two. You know, they have a minus seven score differential, but it's fine. It's okay. The whips are banged up, especially a lot of teams are, but the whips are really banged up, despite the fact that they have, you know, a you know, a minus one score differential. They're, they're still one and four. They're banged up. The Atlas one and four, just terrible. How 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 can you be this talented and yet your defense allows, you know, just this type of stuff each and every week? Very talented squad. They allowed 19 goals on multiple occasions. Multiple. Multiple occasions. You know, you let the chaos beat you with some tricky behind the back goals and stuff like that you let you just you just i, I just don't know and chrome chrome wanted for negative 14 score differential they might be even worse watching that game between the chrome and the cannons was absolutely terrible i mean the chrome had at least 25 turnovers in that game against the cannons and it was it was rough. Like, like I, I just I just can't understand it. Like, the whips are injured. You know, I, I did a poll. You know, said that said which team is the most disappointing so far. You can't really fault the whips. I mean, they're very talented and stuff like that. But they're still one and four. But honestly, you could you could pick your head out of a hat. And reveal either the Atlas or the Chrome that are more disappointing than, than anything. I mean, the Water Dogs didn't even put a face off guy. They've been finding success without one. Rob Pinnell getting close to the 300 goal club. I know I know Holman's over 300, but you know, people were talking about Pinnell trying to be peep, it be peep material. I don't know about that. I still think it's Ryder Garzi and everything like that. I think I think a lot of people think that that Ryder Garzi has. You know, MVP potential. Uh, the NLL, yes, yes, we are talking NLL here today. It's a beautiful day to talk the NLL because, you know, a lot of things happened in regards to trades and stuff like that. Like Matt Beers, he's going to Panther City with a first round pick as well, and I believe like a second round pick in like 2024, 2025, or something like that. So they sent Beers off to Panther City. They got Patrick Dodds, who's out playing in Canada right now. And Cam Wingrick, you know, also a really good guy. I probably pronounced his name wrong. My bad. Uh, then they, got, they, they, they get Mark Matthews. 
They get Mark Matthews from Toronto. You know, Zach Mads, Adam J, first round pick, you know, everything like that. Saskatchewan's making the moves. They're making the moves. Panther City, they, they you know, had Tracy Kaluski. They, they set him up for another multi year contract, well deserved for getting Panther City to the postseason this past um, season in 2022 2023. Again, I'm hoping to go to a Panther City game at one point before I leave the States for good. Uh, Toronto, Dan Dawson, he's gone. He's retired. Rochester signed Riley Hutchcraft to a two-year contract. Now, those are like the big ones. I know there's probably some minor ones and stuff like that. But, again, you know, a lot of stuff hasn't been reported you know, completely. I know there's all sorts of lax Twitter beef and stuff like that. Yada, yada, yada. I'm trying to get my face out there and everything like that. Uh, but, yeah. So, WLA. Um now, it's a little bit harder to watch the WLA because they make people to try to make people pay to watch the games, which is stupid. But again, Patrick Dots has been playing good for the Victoria Shamrocks. They're seven and six. Um, unlikely that Burnaby, Maple Ridge, or the Adnax will catch up to Victoria. So it looks like our, I'm not sure how the WLA playoff structure works, but. If these if these four teams are the four teams, then I mean, mm, that's really good. That's a really good four teams. Zach Manns again has been on a tear. You know, he's been he's got at least sixty points. He might have even more than that, but he's got at least sixty. Just been on a tear. Thirty plus goals, thirty plus assists, just on a tear. Andrew Gallant um, for the Adnex, he's been on a save mode. He's saved forty four plus. Shots multiple games in a row, and I mean Victoria. They were again last time we talked. You know, lacrosse and everything like that. Victoria was in a dire strait, and they were kind of in the middle of the pack. But they separated themselves from the bottom three, to where they are closer and closer to a playoff berth themselves. Um, major series of lacrosse now. Peterborough, they got themselves a new turf. It looks real nice. It looks real, real nice. You know, the Stotts brothers, Lyle Thompson, you know, Austin Stotts, Randy Stotts, uh, you know, I mean, you know, they've just been scoring and passing their way to the top of the MSL for Six Nations. And did y'all know that the MSL teamed up with the Ontario Women's Box League and rebranded the Women's Major Series Lacrosse? I, I didn't know this was a thing, but an article came up the other day. I was like, it's interesting. You know, interesting. They have 10 teams. It's very interesting. Personally, you know, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm more of a box aficionado at this point. You know, I'm kind of more, I realize that I like the field game, but I think I prefer box. And we're, we're, we're getting to that point, you know, because it's like, oh, you're covering the Man Cup. And I was watching last year's Man Cup. You know, I was watching a good chunk of last year's Man Cup, and I was just very, very much intrigued. You know, I think there could be some things that the NLL could implement from the from the Canadian box leagues. But anyway, 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 I'm getting off track. Um, there was a game played, um, you know, between Coburg and Branson, and you see, you know, it's kind of a in disparity right now, you know, uh, Brampton, I believe, has one game left. So yeah, um, so they're gonna they're probably gonna finish at the bottom unless something happens. I believe four teams make it in the NSL playoffs. Not sure yet. We'll figure that out when we get there. We'll figure that out when we get there. All right. Uh, but yeah, Six Nations, Peterborough. You know, two teams at the top. Obviously, you know, two best teams. In a five team league, you know, Brooklyn, six and five, kind of there. I think it improves definitely over the next few weeks. Uh, you know, everything is, you know, getting on to things. It's getting it's getting on. So Athletes Unlimited, uh, last but not least, um, not much to say. You know, Taylor Moreno, the 2022 champion, Sam Puzo, Ali Mastrianati, uh, I probably mispronounced that name very badly as well. And Britt Reed will lead off 
the four teams, you know, the blue, the uh, the yellow, the orange, the purple teams, you know, they'll be the captains, they'll be the leaders, they will be these teams, you know, they'll be the leaders to start off season three on the uh, on the 20th, which was a Thursday again. Athletes will be the place Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. So there's all that good stuff there and everything like that. So we're in a good position right now in the lacrosse world. Lots of stuff just breaking off and breaking into major news stories and everything like that. I, I'm not even going to get into you know, the whole college lacrosse stuff right now because I just feel like it's just not... You know, again, it's, it ties into the lax for the I'm trying to get myself out there, you know, to talk more lax with y'all and everything like that. Because I love, I love this game. I love the game. It's our game, you know. And I mean that from my Native American heritage anyway, you know, it's our game. So, you know, we're sharing the creator's game with the entire world. And we're having a damn good blast with it. So, in any case... Next time I see you will be in a couple weeks. It'll be a couple Mondays from now. It'll either be Monday or that Tuesday. I'm not sure which yet. Probably will be late. So, yeah. Um, you know, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet to, you know, get your thoughts in on some lax, you, you should be doing that. You really should be because... We are hard hitting here at Big Boy Sports. We're talking about the cross, and we don't we don't hold back. We don't hold punches back and everything like that. Like you got to lead. You want to talk about? It, we'll talk about it. So we'll I'll see if I can you know watch the games and get into it. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that's it. I'll see you all on either July the thirty first or August the first to talk more lacrosse and be sure to. Check out this week in indoor football, the weekly show that I do talking the indoor arena football scene. You know, get closer and closer to college football, NFL, and everything like that. So these this is the time of year where you know potentially new faces could get up to the channel. Let's bring those subs up and I'll see you all very soon. <laughs>